Welcome back to Five Wide Fantasy. Today's video, we're running a 12-team PPR mock draft. Just me and Ryan today. I know you guys wanted to see some longer forms of these mock drafts, so um, the two of us can shoot the shit and talk about this for forever. So hopefully it doesn't run too long, but um, we'll get into more of our analysis, what our thought process is on each and every pick. Um, we're running 13 rounds today. Like I said, 12 teams. Ryan is going to grab the leadoff spot, which is interesting. He says he has something um, that'll pique your interest with the with the 101. Um, and then I'm going to bat out of the uh, the turnaround spot at the 12. So this will be kind of interesting at completely different sides of the draft in terms of how you can put your team, team together and what it can look like. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 20,000 before the football season. Like the video if you enjoyed. Comment down below what other types of mock drafts you guys want to see. Superflex, what other content you guys want to see. We're happy to put it together. We're always listening to people in the comment section. Um, all right, let's kick things off. Again, we've got a couple guys in the office that uh, wanted to join in today and want to get in on the action. Hopefully they don't uh, slow us down too much. Yeah. Yeah, so I took the the one spot kind of to show you guys one draft strategy that I'm taking in a few of my leagues probably this year, and it's the RB0 strategy, and I'm going to show you guys how you could do it from the 101 spot. So um, receivers Gosh. have continued to just be better fantasy players, really, just because of the style of offenses that um, have been in the NFL over the last couple of years. So I'm going with Justin Jefferson at uh, the number one pick here. I think really with uh, O'Connell coming over from the Rams, he's going to have a great season. Um, he led the league last year, or Cooper Cup led the le league last year in red zone targets. So I feel like this is going to be his guy in this offense, Justin Jefferson. Him and Kirk Cousins have great rapport. Um, so I think he's going to be that number one receiver this year. It'll be interesting to see kind of what Cooper Cup does. Yeah, this definitely, this this way of attacking it definitely um, is really in, like something you don't necessarily have to do from the one spot, but I think it's good to show people what, what they could put together from there. Yeah. Um, again, you're right. I mean, wide receiver is just, the, it's a very high scoring position right now, especially with the target volume that Justin Jefferson can, can attain. Um, now being at the 12, I really have a different thought process than I do from like the middle picks. Um, you can, you, this is the spot where you can go tight end where you can grab Travis Kelsey. And honestly, to me, um, this was kind of perfect because I look at running back. DeAndre Swift is definitely my favorite back on the board. I have him as a top five um, running back on the season. But huge but here because it's it's surprising that I wouldn't take my top five back with the number 12 pick. But the turn of, of Travis Kelsey and Stefan Diggs sticks out to me so much. Um, I, it's really hard to pass on even though I'm going to have to wait quite a while um, for running back. I'm okay with that because Travis Kelsey to me is the one on one at the or at the number one player at the, his position, and then Diggs combines really great volume with also Josh Allen and the offense, um, the, the opportunity to hit some big plays, and he's a fantastic red zone option. He's consistently been one of the top end zone target guys at the position. Um, his in the last two seasons, especially last year as well. Um, so that's a really, really nice turn for me because I also have Diggs as a top three receiver on the season. Yeah, I, I like both those picks a lot. I think getting Travis Kelty at the end of the first round is if you have that 12th spot or even even honestly like nine, if you really aren't, if, if your draft strategy at that point's kind of gone a little haywire, I guess, that early on, I don't mind Travis Kelsey at that spot. Fucking hate that Tyreek Hill pick, Sandy, but that's, <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what receivers are left for me coming along here. Um but this is, yeah, this this has actually worked out perfectly um, in my eyes. I would have loved to grab Saquon um, here too, but uh, the first receiver I'm going to be taking. You mean second? Or a second receiver I'm going to be taking, but in this these back to back picks that I have here is, is what I mean. Because who knows? You want to go three receivers in the first three picks? Oh, that's I got you. Wild. I got you. Yes, but yes. Um, I'm not necessarily going to do that. I think at this point, um, you know, I'm in pretty good spot. There's still, you know, I got Mike Evans, AJ Brown, Keenan Allen, all really good options, all guys I really like this year. And then running back too. Not a huge Leonard Fournette fan just because everything that's going on with him in camp. I think Rashad White has a chance of maybe taking this backfield from him or just taking a little bit of away from his fantasy value. Um, so the first pick I'm going to go with here is Mike Evans. I love Mike Evans this year. With Chris Godwin out for the four to six weeks at the beginning of the year, Gronkowski's not on this team anymore. There's just more touchdown volume for Mike Evans. 27 touchdowns over the last two years. It's hard to pass up in the second round. 
And then I am going to take a running back here. Um, I think there's great value on Javante Williams going at the beginning of the third round. A lot of people are high on him. I think he's actually going a little bit earlier in drafts. If you're looking, some people are, you know, his ADP he has come down because he's been very popular. Um, so I like Javante Williams in this backfield. You got to hope that Melvin Gordon isn't as heavily as featured in this offense um, as he was last year. I think uh, they're going to start to switch over to Javante Williams a little bit better. And we'll see really how Russell Wilson does with uh, a fantasy relevant running back. Because I don't think a guy's been drafted this high on this in the Seahawks, Seahawks backfield since maybe Marshawn Lynch. Um, so Yeah. I'm... I'm I would have gone Fournette or Connor. I know people want to kind of hear our, our back and forth on this. I would have taken Fournette or Connor over Williams. I do like Javante's talent. I love his talent. Fournette, though, can, can combine really um, a high reception total. He was third in the NFL in receptions last year with um, touchdown volume inside the five. He was like eighth in end zone or carries inside the five last year. Um, and then we know what James Connor does. He he just is a monster inside the five yard line. Williams, I like, I love his talent, um, but Russell, Russell Wilson doesn't like to check the ball down to running backs. And then I think the offense um, will be throwing quite a bit. And then with Nathaniel Hackett, with Devontae Adams, the running back scoring volume wasn't really there last year. So does he bring that over? Potentially, I think Cortland Sutton's going to be a really good option in the red zone. Um, so. I'm a little bit concerned about that, but I, I do think Javante Williams will still be like a top 15 to 18 back on the, on the season. Um, okay. So in this spot, um, here's where I'm, I'm at Cortland Sutton would be my number one wide receiver left. He is a ways down this board in terms of ADP. Um, that doesn't concern me. It'd be between him and T Higgins, um, for my wide receiver spot. And obviously I've gone, um, I'm, I'm without a running back here in the third round. That's not the most concerning thing to me because I'm going to be trying to get the most, um, the best player available. And honestly, from this 12 spot, if I could do it over, maybe I would take De uh, DeAndre Swift instead of Stefan Diggs because I can get a couple good, uh, really high level um, wide receivers still in Cortland Sutton and T. Higgins. So I'm going Cortland Sutton. He's the top, I have him as the number 12 wide receiver in my rankings. Um, and then I will go um, a player that I haven't typically gone to in drafts yet, but I am excited about this year. I'm going to go with Travis Etienne over, um, over, sorry, who am I? Bl I'm blanking on, uh, on T, over, over T Higgins, um, because I'm going to try to grab um, two running backs in these next three picks. And I really like Etienne and I really like um, the opportunity he has with James Robinson surely being out to start the year and then with an Achilles injury, he may never be back to what people would expect from him. Um, and I think the Jags are in for a, a, a good bounce back season. Um, you guys saw it when, if you watched our uh, um, worst to first video in terms of division winners, I had the Jags as a sneaky, sneaky play over at Caesars. Don't hate that. that there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of unknown in that division heading into this year. Is Matt Ryan going to be better than Carson Wentz? I don't think so. Who knows? But uh, but no, I like I like those two picks. And, you know, interesting to see kind of what people will say about that Cortland Sutton pick. I don't know if people might if the, people might think that's a, a reach Too early, or not, yeah, in the but, third. But, I, like, I don't. I don't think so. Like, mm -hmm. we both are pretty high on Denver yeah. receivers. I mentioned it when I talked about Javante. I do think that Cortland Sutton has a chance with his size, with his profile, to be a good red zone option, too, not just deep threat. Yeah, nice. I like that Josh Jacob pick there from, from Sandy. So this is kind of a tough spot for me. Um, you know, looking at the receivers left here, you got DK, Jalen Waddell, DJ Moore. I do like DJ Moore this year. Uh, you got Judy. I would have probably grabbed a tight end if those if Kittle and Waller, one of those guys, would have, would have stayed there. But I right. think at this point, I'm probably going to be going receiver again. I don't think there's – I think there's better value in taking a, a running back um, – maybe either next round or, or sorry, in two rounds, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, since it, considering I have back-to-back -back picks. Um, so the first pick I'm going to go with is, is DJ Moore. I do like DJ Moore in this offense. He has gotten so much volume. He just really hasn't been able to score a ton of touchdowns over the last couple of years. I think Baker will be an, an upgrade from Sam Darnold, um, especially considering the other receiving options on this team. Um, and then, yeah, this is a, this is a, a tough spot for me here because I feel like I should – uh, be taking a running back, but I think there's also um, just better value at receiver here. So you don't want to take 
J.K. Dobbins, he kind of hyped the people up that he's going to be yeah. ready to go for week yeah, one. Yeah, I know. I'm, I mean, he has, like, he tore his ACL last year, right? In, yeah, right. Last, like, in, the pre, uh, in the preseason. Last preseason game. Like, has there ever been a, a guy who's tore his ACL in the preseason, both, like, the year before and not played week one? So that's why I kind of, I'm starting to believe, like, the, all the rap yeah. stuff that I we're mean, seeing is kind of bullshit, right? right? Like, he has. It's he's a full had year. Full, yeah. full enough time. Um, We've to, seen guys do this, so. come back from ACL an ACL tear in eight months. It's not yeah. it, like yeah. that. This is an injury that is over the course of the last five years has really started to shorten in terms of rehab time. Um, so I'm I'm actually I'm not going to go running back here either. Mm -hmm. I, there's other running backs that I like that I can take that I can slot in that second spot later on. I'm actually going to go with Mike Williams here. Um, receivers you want to take in these couple rounds are guys that have a lot of touchdown volume and op touchdown opportunity. Mike Williams was that guy on that offense last year, and he also had got a lot of the deep ball opportunities. Keenan Allen's more of the mid-range uh, option for this offense. Mike Williams, the deep ball, and then he runs all the wide receiver fades in the, uh, you know, in the five, from five-yard line and in. Uh, obviously, there's Eckler to worry about for red zone um, share, but I think that uh, Mike Williams is a great option. If you're getting him around this this time frame, I think that's perfect. Fifth or sixth round, uh, I don't think you're reaching at all. So, yeah, the nice thing with with Williams is is that the Chargers didn't take that speedy um, threat out wide to kind of pair with him in like three wide receiver sets. So they don't have like Jalen Guyton. Looks like Joshua Palmer is going to take over as that third wide receiver. He's not a a speed threat or downfield threat. He's a crafty route runner try and emulate, you know, what Keenan Allen's role is. So Mike's going to be the big, the deep threat guy for sure. And we've seen the size on this guy and, and his ability to, to make plays at the catch point is just incredible. Better than honestly, to me, anyone else in the NFL. So he, he, he will hurt himself doing that, but <laughs> he is yeah. great at it. Yeah. So as we, w with Sandy having this last pick, I'm looking at like AJ Dillon to me is, is the guy I would want right now. Um, if he can make it to me, um, same with Miles Sanders uh, at wide receiver. I'm hoping for Marquise Brown um, would be someone that's sticking out that I would look to. Um, we haven't really talked much quarterback. Kyler Murray still being available here at the the five six turn is also um, intriguing to me. Um, him and Jalen Hurts would be the two guys yeah. that I'm that I'm looking at. I think um, we both have, but again, seen, it's early. Like, would you ever take a quarterback um, within the like early? Um, the one guy I would probably do it for would be Lamar Jackson because I think the I think the Ravens are going to like turn back the clock. Twenty nineteen, Lamar Jackson is going to have like twelve hundred yards on the ground and throw for like thirty touchdowns because he still has. I still think Bateman Bateman Andrews is a great wide receiver duo for yeah, him. Yeah, I, I I honestly really hope Rashad Bateman pans out. I really liked him in Minnesota. Um, you know that that duo of him and Tyler Johnson was actually quite lethal. So yeah. I think he can actually be a featured receiver in the NFL and in this offense if Lamar can figure out. You know it's. It's all on Lamar's accuracy and the time he has in the pocket and him not freaking out, whatever it may be. But, um, yeah, I, I don't mind Bateman this year. Um, A.J. Dillon is an easy, easy the first one for him here. I won't even discuss, won't even uh, think about it. If you guys haven't watched our Bus Proof Running Backs video, go watch it. I talked about Dillon a lot in there. And at his current at his current draft position, I think he can't miss. He's he already had more carries than Aaron Jones last year. He out-touched him inside the red zone. I think he's going to get the valuable touches. He was also great as a receiver. I think he's going to have a huge year. I think he could I think he could have a better fantasy season than Aaron Jones does. I wow. truly think that. Wow. I think that's in the realm of outcomes. So going outside the top 20 right now, to me, is, is a lot of value. I have him as my RB20 right now. Um, but I do think range of outcomes, he could be a top 12 back. Um, so Dylan is easy there, and I really like where I'm at. I really like where I'm at through my first five picks. Kelsey, Diggs, Sutton, Etienne, Dylan. I actually am loving the 12 spot now. I'm feeling even better. Um, a, a Swift I love. He would have been an interesting option, but I don't feel bad about it now that I'm able to get Etienne and Dylan. Um, so Miles Sanders is another guy on my radar with this next pick. This is always, for me, this is the wide receiver. I don't want to call it the wide receiver dead zone. I don't truly think that it is, but... This is where I'm, these are some guys I'm less excited about. Now, if that, those rumors about Deshaun Watson's suspension being half the season, maybe I could start considering Amari Cooper in a couple of rounds from now. Yeah, I still yeah. wouldn't yet. Um, but if I get half a season of one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL throwing the ball to Amari Cooper, that's intriguing. Um, but that, at the same time, we could talk about that with DeAndre Hopkins too. Like Kyler Murray's not the best pass, one of the best passers in the NFL, but Hopkins is getting less games. Um, so let's go. 
Honestly, this is either a time for me to go Miles Sanders with someone with lower upside, but I do think can outperform his ADP, or do I go secure one of these top quarterbacks who I think can still give me really high level play? I'm going Kyler Murray um, in the sixth because this is to, this is like some of the latest we've seen Kyler Murray going in the last couple of years. The sixth round, he's been a top three f- fantasy quarterback before. Um, Marquise Brown comes and replaces DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins is going to be back too. I think Murray still has the chance. Even if you don't like the Cardinals and what Cliff Kingsbury is doing, fantasy-wise, yeah. this guy value can't be denied. Yeah, one of the best deep throwers in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a like the pretty. I do not like Cliff Kingsbury whatsoever. Yeah. I think he's one of the. No, I don't want to say one of the worst coaches in the NFL. It's just you know it. it Patrick happened, Mahomes helps, but it, that's what ha- that's what did it. Yeah, for, right? yeah absolutely. It. It, it's just it. It changes so like every year they do great, and then as soon as people start to figure out their offense and what they're doing, he has no if uh, ability to make adjustments because they 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 absolutely suck from week twelve and on since mm-hmm. he's been their head coach. Yeah, they don't close out seasons well. If you think about it too, I would say that Cliff Kingsbury didn't do enough with Patrick Mahomes talent in college because I remember watching Mahomes playing in, in college at Texas Tech and I remember a few games where he was pulled where his play was good but erratic and now we've seen him in the NFL and his talent is well he's the most talented player at the position so you could argue that Cliff Kingsbury didn't do enough with the guy that he had because yeah. Texas Tech was never good they yeah, were never no, no. they were they were a team that was exciting to watch for their offense, but they were never a threat to win the Big Twelve with Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. They were they were like I think their best season maybe was like eight and four, seven and five. Yeah. Um. So I love my first pick in this one. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go running back. I am going to take Damian Harris. Um. Last year of his contract, usually they get run into the ground at this point, especially in the Patriots backfield. You know, we saw what happened with Garrett Blunt, uh, tons of touchdowns. Last year, the volume was there for Damian Harris. I don't really see that changing all that much. Um, even with Ramondre Stevenson there, he's a great running back as well. But I think Harris will be the bell, bell cow as much as you can be a bell cow back in a bell, Bill Belichick offense. Um, you know, he was top five in red zone carries last year, and uh, he had finished with 12 touchdowns inside the red zone as well. So I'm going to take Damian Harris um, as my RB2. So I don't mind that Javante Williams, um, Damian Harris pairing, considering the four receivers that I have right now, for sure. I would, I was going to look at Jalen Hurts at this spot, thought he would stay there. You know, we're, we're a little handicapped here because we're talking about all this analysis, and then the guys in the office are listening to us as well. So yeah. they can <laughs> scoop that up. Um, but I don't want to really reach on a tight end because I don't know how I feel about Dallas Goddard at this point. Um, I probably, as much as I want to take Russell Wilson in this offense, um, it's a tough one for me. It's a tough one. Yeah, I don't, for me, draft strategy wise, tight end kind of goes out the door. Mm-hmm. Um, if I don't grab one of the top, if I don't get Kittle, Pitts, Andrews, or Kelsey, um, I'm not considering Dallas Goddard. I would go back to Zach. Zach Ertz would be the time when I get back into in on a tight end. Yeah, um, I, I think that's a good point. And then beyond that, I'm waiting until a Cole Komet, a uh, Gerald Everett, like really late into the draft. Yeah. Um, I think I am going to go quarterback here, though. To be honest, I do. I love Russell Wilson in this offense with Nathaniel Hackett. We've talked about it. I don't think there's going to be a season where Russell Wilson has more passing volume than this year coming up right now. Um, with the weapons that he has, the coach that he has, and just the kind of the offense that I think John, El- John Elway has been wanting to put in place into this since pretty much Peyton Manning left is that pass heavy offense. We saw so many receivers excel in that. <laughs> Eric Decker, Julius Thomas, Demarius Thomas, along with. Um, uh, Peyton Manning was very fantasy relevant back then, so I'm going to take Russell Wilson here. Yeah, I, I this is definitely a, a year where Russell Wilson's probably going the latest he's gone in a while in the seventh, which is weird. I guess maybe. Yeah, I mean, I he think had good weapons last year still, and he, like in Seattle, there's still some great receivers there. But yeah, he he was off last year when he came back. Even when he came back before he got hurt, his his deep ball wasn't like quite on the way it's been in years past. A lot of that could be just like the fatigue of playing on that like playing under Pete Carroll for so long he could he, he he's definitely someone that could benefit from a change of scenery I definitely think so um so I'm I feel like I'm in a really good spot in terms of um Stefan Diggs gives me a great floor Cortland Sutton gives me upside I think I think AJ Dillon's going to give me a good floor Etienne is someone that I'm uh I think is a riskier play um 
but I think he's still someone that that has a chance to far exceed his ADP. Um, I shouldn't say far exceed, exceed his ADP, because I don't think Etienne has top 12 back upside. Um, I don't think he can give me a James Robinson type year, but I think he could he could be on the precipice of it in a best case scenario, I guess I would say. Um, wide receiver, you know, I'm not a Gabriel Davis fan. Elijah Moore is someone I'm probably, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on um, in the Jets offense. I, he flashed really well um, last season. Um, as I go down the board, Chris Olave is really interesting just with Jameis Winston back at QB. Um, you know, and I go back to running back. Chase Edmonds is someone that sticks out. Um, so it's really, I'm, at this point, I've filled tight end and quarterback. All I have to do is look between running back and wide receiver. You're not, don't waste your time with quarterback twos or tight end twos, especially if I have Kelsey. I'm certainly not. And with Kyler Murray, I'm, I'm certainly not. Um, so I'm going to go Chase Edmonds with the first pick. I, I've been talking about this with Ryan before we got on. I do think with Edmonds, so I was looking at running back threes that have the upside to be run, to be a top 12 back. To me, Edmonds kind of fills that because I look at last year, the two guys that did it, James Conner and Leonard Fournette, what they had in common was um, the big thing was touches inside the, inside the 20, red zone, rushing attempts. Um, Chase Edmonds, that's his biggest concern this year, right? But we do have a head coach that cherry-picked him to be um, his back. And then we look at Leonard Fournette, and Leonard Fournette was third in running back um, receptions last year, which is something Chase Edmonds can certainly do, I think, in this offense. So I think at running back like 35 right now, I think his upside can't be denied. Now there is the, the, the um, riskiness, I'm, I'm missing the word that I'm, I'm thinking of here to better describe it. But the risk, the risk is with Edmonds is that a Sony Michelle um, takes those valuable inside the 20 touches from. Him. So this is a volatile player, I think, mm. but worthy of the risk, I think, in the seventh round. So that's why I'm going Chase Edmonds. Um, so that will be three running backs that I've targeted in these last four rounds. Um, I, I don't need to focus too much. These other guys at the position, I think, are, you know, the next guy would really be in considering is Ramondre Stevenson. These other guys, I'm not too, too high on this year. Um, so I'm going to go back to wide receiver. I'm going to look at, um, as I'm scrolling through Christian Kirk is someone I'm high on, but it's still too early. Um, I'll, I could, could get Christian Kirk coming back to me, uh, potentially, probably not actually. What, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm a long ways away from picking. So I'm going to go Elijah Moore. Um, I liked Elijah Moore last year. Um, I think Garrett Wilson can get involved for sure, but rookies take some time. So Elijah Moore has the opportunity with some success with Zach Wilson to build on that uh, early in the season and establish himself in the offense. I don't think it's a Corey Davis. Uh, there's any issue with Corey Davis in the offense at this point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, I, it's Elijah Moore was great when he played last year, mm-hmm. especially right before he got hurt. I'm just really worried about the development of, of Zach Wilson. I have no, I honestly have my expectations are, are at it. Like, a, I don't know what to do with, with Zach Wilson this year. I don't know what to expect yeah. from him, to be honest. No, I, I hear you. I agree. I, th- I think usually when you pr- like think about quarterbacks that were successful early, if you could take some stats that the quarterbacks that maybe they weren't fantastic early on, um, but can you can kind of say, I think they'll improve significantly. I always look at like how they are under pressure and how they their success against the blitz because that tells me they can read defenses, make plays on their own without you know the help of their uh, head coach kind of babying them through the process of playing NFL football. That's what Joe Burrow and Le- and Justin Herbert oh, were able to do off. really well. So fucking computer. Wilson was pretty bad at that last year. He was bad against the blitz and really bad under pressure. So I was definitely going to take oh a little tight end around Zach Ertz for sure. Yeah, um, but I mean this guy's staring at me right in the face. So guys, I'm really liking this year at running back is Devin Singletary. And I know T-Mac doesn't really like this pick, but no, going... I think I, I wouldn't say that. Like I think in the eighth round, yeah. you don't need to take guys that have high upside every time in the eighth round. This is, I think Singletary has a good floor. Yeah. And, and you know what? La- I think this offense has started to really trust Singletary as their premier back. I know they took James Cook in the second round, um, but they also did sign Duke Johnson in the off season. So James Cook is probably going to be that receiving back. Although, Duke Johnson is receiving back, so that's why I think Singletary has, he's going to be the, the running back. He's going to be the guy they're going to be trusting inside the red zone. He had 40 red zone rushes last year. 
Um, he actually finished in the last six weeks of the season. He finished as the RB three in PPR scoring yeah, leagues. He had a great um, finish, and then even into the playoffs, he was averaging almost twenty fantasy points per game as well. I like that to carry over next year, and when you have that kind of uh, volume, I guess you could say later on in this ra- in these rounds, I think he's he's a no brainer pick for me, especially with where the draft strategy that I kind of took at this point, because um, I think you ca- I can plug him in some weeks um, in lieu of D- Damian Harris or you know like uh, I think he's he can be put in with those guys and play at the same kind of caliber. So Devin Singletary for sure for that pick. Um, and then looking at it now, like even, you know, like tight ends at this point still are just, yeah, if you, just I there. think if I miss on Ertz, I'm, like I said, I'm waiting until yeah. you're the end of the draft and I can take some flyers on a few guys. Like if you, if you feel like the rest of your roster's in a good spot, I'm not completely against in like the last two rounds getting two tight ends. If you feel like your yeah. roster's in a really good spot, because then we can go with a, um, you know, a. Uh, Cole Komet will probably go in the next two rounds, but like a Gerald Everett um, and who who else would I be thinking of? I don't know, a Tyler Higby or, or Robert Tunyon. Yeah, Ger- Gerald Everett um, I would I would look at for sure later on. Um, so I'm not going to be taking tight end at this point. Uh, even like, I know it's crazy even think about, but Noah Fant even maybe. Like, I don't know, Dr- the Drew Locke connection there. There's two <laughs> yeah. guys that could, they're obviously DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are there, but who knows what that offense is going to look like this year with Drew Locke under center. Um, there's a receiver here that I really like that I think has a, a really good opportunity um, coming into an offense that hasn't, um, that's missing a couple guys really. Michael Thomas, uh, he's not going to be ready for week one, right? No, no he's practicing. He's, he's practicing. practicing. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris Olave is a guy I think is, has, has a great value at this point of the draft. Um, he's the best route runner coming out of this draft, 100% coming out of Ohio State. Probably the most developed receiver in my opinion. Uh, you know, those couple of guys went before him, obviously, like Jameson Williams, uh, Garrett Wilson, or Garrett Wilson for sure. Um, I maybe have a little bit higher upside just because of their skill level, but I think Olave is right where he needs to be to succeed in his first year. Uh, and right now, Jarvis Landry's there. I think Olave is probably a better receiver. You know, they might give him a little bit more opportunities as, um, as that rookie coming in. And even with Jameis Winston, when Jameis Winston was in, he wasn't horrible. Um, so, I mean, I think we've seen him throw a ton of touchdowns, which is what you need, and a ton of yards. So maybe in this new offense under Dennis Allen, this could work. Uh, but I'm going to take Chris Olave here. I think that's great value right before the 10th round. Uh, one of the, one of the better, um, one of the better rookie receivers coming this year for sure. Yeah. I, I, I really love a lot of the rookies. I love Jamison Williams. I'm not going to be taking him pretty much anywhere this year, just because yeah. I don't know if the Lions offense is there yet in terms of supporting multiple guys or um, his injury, of course, keeps him from from playing early on. But I love his talent. I love Garrett Wilson's talent. Garrett Wilson is just so. Um, what would be the word? Like just everything is so smooth and easy with the with that guy when he's on the field. It's it's awesome to watch. Alave's Alave's another guy that's that's a fun player. He doesn't really have the. I think he's going to do really well with James Jameis Winston. He doesn't have like the size um, or the the straight line speed that Jameson Williams has, but he kind of blends the two of those together. Um, to be a really intriguing option this year, I'll definitely be taking him in some in some of my leagues for sure. Yeah, and looking at some of the other options at receiver there at that time that were available, like a guy that's right really on T Max lap right now is Russell Gage, a guy I talked about in my wide mm-hmm. receiver sleepers. He's a must draft receiver for me at this point with Godwin out, you know, highest rated passing offense in the uh, NFL last year with Tom Brady and in terms of volume as well. Russell Gage with what he's had to work with with playing with Matt Ryan over the last year has actually been really good, really efficient in the red zone. Um, and when uh, Calvin Ridley was out, he was actually the go-to guy. Even the fact that Cordero Patterson was probably still their number one option, he was still putting up 14 to 15 fantasy points a week. So I think he's going to do really well in this offense. This year. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I'm definitely going to go Russell Gage. I, I mentioned Christian Kirk, but realizing that you know I have Travis Etienne, I'm not going to go with two guys that, um, although I like them both, I don't want to include two teams on the Jags or two players on the Jags on my same on my same roster. I do like them both individually, but together, I think it's a little bit too um, risky. I do think Kirk has a really good floor, though. It's hard for me to pass on him, but I am going to pass on him. I'm going to go with Russell Gage um, uh, with the, with the first pick there, and then I'm also like Kadarius Tony is a player. I'm much like Cortland Sutton. I'm 
certainly willing to reach on. So for me, it's between Kadarius Tony I mean, and Ramondre Stevenson. I don't even think Kadarius Tony is that much of a, of a reach, to be honest. At this point, tenth round. No, I don't think he's a reach at all. But I'm thinking there's people who can who are telling me, oh, Alan Lazard could be the wide receiver oh, yeah, one for yeah, the Packers. Yeah. Christian Watson has great talent that he could be the wide receiver one yeah, for the I'm Packers. I'm surprised Sandy didn't take. Uh Christian Watson. Yeah, or Scott. People could tell me Sky, Sky Moore, Moore is going to really, yeah, you know, the best offense in the NFL. He's going to really evolve in his first year. I think there's, I think there's better options than Sky Moore on the board right now. Yeah. Um, so between him and Ramondre Stevenson for me, like I said, Stevenson I think is someone who'll give me a nice floor. He's very safe. Um, Kadarius Tony is with injury history, um, and you know, new offense. Still Daniel Jones. I'm really excited about him because I think he flashed incredibly to a degree that no other rookie did other than Jamar Chase um, last season when he was on the field. So he is a riskier play just because of the injury history, but I think Dable's going to have this offense in a fantastic spot. Um, so it's really the balance of, do I want to go safer or do I want to go um, with someone that could give me more upside? And I know I've kind of gone with upside with Chase Edmonds, uh, like I mentioned earlier with his his risky, like him being a more risk-averse player, but at wide receiver, I've I think I've got good floor with Stefan Diggs and Cortland Sutton. So I'm going to go with someone that I could be sitting some weeks, but also could end up being a mainstay on my team in, court, in Kadarius Tony. He was ridiculous tackle breaker. Um, he demanded his target rate was incredibly high when he was on the field. Um, and I think Dable is going to really improve this offense this year significantly. Ramondre Stevenson does uh, yeah. go. Good, uh, good, good pick there, uh, uh, Levi. Yeah, Levi. Levi was listening. He took um, advice. Christian Watson. Again, the, the boys go. are listening to you us. Guys are listening. Here. <laughs> um, so this is uh, a pretty obvious pick for me. And at this point, I still do not have a tight end. We're in the 10th round, 11th round. Um, Cole Komet's a perfect option at this point. There's really not a lot of options in at receiver for Justin Fields right now. You have David Montgomery uh, at running back. You know, you have Darnell Mooney, who's probably going to be a pretty viable fantasy option this year, considering he's literally the only re receiver other than like Byron Pringle. And they just they just traded for Nikhil Harry, I think, too, right? Yep. So, yep. but he's been he's maybe played six total yeah. games in his career. If, so. we're, if you're talking to Nikhil Harry when you're deciding whether or not you want to draft Cole Komet, yeah. don't draft Cole Komet because <laughs> you just shouldn't even consider it. Yeah. Like Nikhil Harry is not the not going to have an impact on no. Cole Komet. I think Cole Komet, you know, there's there's a level of also Justin Fields and him. You know, they built somewhat of chemistry last year. They're a little bit more familiar with each other going into this season. Um, and there's always a safety blanket with these younger quarterbacks with their tight ends, their big tight ends, either in the red zone or even just a dump off. PPR leagues, these guys can be very valuable. So Cole Komet, I'll take there. Yeah. Uh, no problem. And if now I at could this say point, one thing before you yeah, get to the second pick it. is I think people might think that the Bears might take a similar approach to the Eagles with running the ball. That that's not going to happen. Like um, Justin Fields is not the type of runner in terms of stylistically that Jalen Hurts is. You remember the um, was it the national championship or the semifinal? No, I think it was the national championship game when he took that hit helmet right in the back from uh, Skalski, the Clemson oh, yeah, linebacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he doesn't know <laughs> how to get classic. tackled. Who, Justin uh, Fields. Oh, Justin. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like he wouldn't. He, there's still going to be. Lots of, of passing volume from this team. He, Justin Fields will pick up yards on the ground with his legs, but it won't be a traditional quarterback run. It'll be scrambling. It'll be making things up on his own. So Komet yeah. will still have volume. Yeah, for sure. Because so, they'll be losing a lot. <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely some receiver options here. I mean, looking at a running back would probably be smart as well, uh, considering we're coming up on the last couple picks as, uh, here. You know, Tyler, a guy like Tyler Boyd, I think, can have a really good season. You know, playing in that slot, I feel like Higgins or Chase, I'm not sure which one, won't have as impactful of a year as they did this year. Uh, I think they're going to, corners and defenses are going to pay a lot more attention to these two guys. I think Tyler Boyd has a spot to kind of be missed by a lot of defenses because he's one of the best. He's actually a top, I would say he's a top five to seven uh, slot receiver, um, close to, or maybe not top five, top seven, maybe I'd say, in the NFL. He's he's put up 1,000-yard seasons before. Uh, even in this offense with so many mouths to feed, I think he's still good. So at this spot, he would be a good pick. Uh, Mark, uh, you know, MVS on KC, there's so much, like, unknown. Yeah. One in this offense, who's going to be the third option? Is it going to be Sky Moore? Is it going to be... I, it, I'm never, I'm never going to be drafting McCole Hardman in fantasy football, but uh, is it going to be him or is it going to be um, Josh Gordon? MBS? Is still around, and Josh Gordon. <laughs> they still have, and they have. Don't they have Justin Ross too? Uh, 
Yeah, they yeah they took him as the as an undrafted uh, free so, agent. Um, there's a couple running backs I like a little bit later, so I, I'm gonna go with Tyler Boyd here at this spot. I think it poses the best value for my lineup at this at this time. Yeah, I don't love the four running backs that are right there at the top. Um, if you're looking at it, Isaiah Spiller, Ronald Jones, uh, Damian Pierce, and Alexander Madison, those are all kind of like handcuffs at this point. I don't have any of those running backs, so I don't see really a ton of value in it. You can kind of try to guess and pick one of those guys. I think they're all options, but Tyler Boyd, for me, I think he'll have a way more impactful fantasy season for the lineup I currently have right now. Yeah, I think I think my strategy with handcuffs is to, I don't... I don't feel necessary to take the handcuff of my own running back. Yeah. I'll take hand- other people's handcuffs, no okay. problem. It gives me upside that something happens. They could they could uh, be valuable to me because I'm not planning to start them uh, regardless. Um, what you were saying on Boyd, though, he has a chance to actually improve on last season because you think of, of um, what's his, oh my God, gone to the Jets now, tight oh, end. C.J. Uzama. Yeah, C.J. Uzama out. So there's even more because Uzama made a ton of plays from like that the middle of the field yeah, slot yeah, area. Yeah, definitely, that's a good like point. Like Hayden actually. Hurst is coming in, but Boyd could improve on last year, and he's going well beyond what he usually. He, he pretty much always finishes as a top 36 wide receiver. Like he just kind of gets it, or top 40 wide receiver. He kind of always does better than what is expected of him. Or I shouldn't say always because in other years he was drafted much higher, but he's being o- definitely overlooked and uh, and will, probably has no problem exceeding his ADP to mm-hmm. me. Um, well, we got the other boys really thinking hard about their picks when I told them they couldn't do that. But here, here we are, a minute into Sandy's pick. He's still chatting, and he wants to go with Naeem Hines. And I'd nice. rather put a couple forks in my eyeballs than draft <laughs> Naeem Hines. That's a waste of a pick. <laughs> Rashad Hi, boy, Sandy. Rashad White, Tyler Algier at running back. Um, those, those are would my, be guys. my biggest Both considerations. Both of my guys right there. Um, Daryl Williams is someone I'd consider. I think he could take a lot of the um, pass catching work from James Conner. Uh, he was really good as a pass catcher for the Chiefs. You saw it in the playoffs too. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on as a as a decent like. Yes, he's a handcuff technically. He'd take over if Conner was hurt, but he's also I think going to be valuable. He was ma- and, honestly otherwise. massive at the end of last yeah. fantasy season for a lot, including myself. I had him, and I, he was he was my start one of my starting running backs because I just had some running back injuries. He yeah. was an awesome option. He was because he 100%. would score pretty much every game too, right? So um, I I think I, I think that that's spot on with that analysis. It goes my, back to the it just goes Arizona. back to the Chiefs thing, right? It's I like know. Clyde edwards helaire exactly. Maybe we take a shot because yeah. he could he could do it. Daryl fucking Williams managed to do. If only he could do what Daryl Williams managed to do. Um, I'm going to take Rashad White, though. Nice. Uh, do I believe in the Leonard Fournette overweight, meaning he's going to lose his job? No. I think the team's pissed off because uh, they're like, hey, dude, you're our guy. What the fuck are you doing? We're going to have to give you the ball anyway. So this is really annoying. Uh, but White, it could carve himself out a role. Um, and maybe Fournette's pass catching work trims down because White put on a show as a pass catcher. Not a lot of guys in college uh, like I would say other than Isaiah Spiller did a great job. The, the Texas A&M had a, has a problem. They can't recruit wide receivers. <laughs> they, they always are using the running backs, but usually running backs don't play a massive role in college as a pass catcher. And he's been doing it for time at Arizona state. So he could carve out a role at least as a pass catcher and potentially with his talent, take some work from Fournette, which, which Aaron or Ronald Jones did last year too, right? It's not like Fournette. He had 180 carries. He didn't have 240, 250. He had 180. Like there's, the team's not looking to run Fournette into the ground. There's going to be someone that's going to take some carries too. So White has a chance to do so. And he's an obvious handcuff too. Like we're talking top 15 upside if Leonard Fournette got hurt. You love him. I don't even know. I'm I'm help, yeah. I'm explaining everything I, you probably I love would. Rashad White. Yeah. I think, you know, his everyone loves Brees Hall this year. Obviously, he had, he's the lead. He's going to be the lead back probably in the Jets offense. Yeah. But they had almost identical numbers at the combine. Uh, this guy had a, t- a huge target share at Arizona State. He was playing, which I you don't generally see with Pac-12 running backs. Um, you know, usually you'll see that even like target share and just being on the field. Like he was always on the field, always on the field in this team. I think in Tampa Bay, he can be that James White kind of guy for Tom Brady. So yeah. I, I really like him. And yeah, I, you know what? I agree with you. I don't think that uh, the whole weight thing with Leonard Fournette, it's not like Rashad White's going to be like, oh yeah, he's going to be the starting running back week <laughs> yeah, one. That, no, that's not going to happen. But there's a lot, there's a narrative right now going around with Leonard Fournette. So, you know, you could follow it a little bit, but I think just the pure skill and upside that White brings to this team will will be really helpful for, uh, for fantasy. Yeah, players. yeah, I agree. Okay, so I'm trying to... 
So I'm really between um, Tim Patrick and I would probably go Daryl Daryl Williams or Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards, someone I talked about as a sleeper. Uh, the Dobbins chit chat from himself on Twitter had me thinking. I think he's going to be ready um, because you shouldn't talk like that and say that you'll be ready for week one and then not be ready for week one. Now we have seen that in the past where guys will be like, "Start me in fantasy." I remember Keaton Allen did that. He was like, "Game time decision." He was on Twitter and was like, "I'm starting." Like you could start me, and then he showed up and he ran half the amount of his usual routes, and I think he yeah, caught one the pass. So Just the decoy. don't always believe the guys on Twitter when they're talking on yeah. Twitter. Um, I'm going to go Tim Patrick, I think, yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I have Corlin Sutton. I don't want to go Tim Patrick. That would have been silly. That's why That's why we take longer to draft. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh. I'm just not that excited about Tyler Algier. I think the Falcons suck. Their offensive line sucks. I just I don't see it. Um, Daryl Williams... Daryl Williams, or do I go someone even farther down the board like a Jalen Tolbert? Jacoby Myers. Because go Jacoby Myers. He would give me a floor too. I'm going to go Daryl Williams. I talked up Daryl yeah. Williams, and I feel good about how I talked about Daryl Williams, so I'm going to take him. Now, definitely, add, definitely adding a lot of um, depth at running back. Um, with some guys I like. I don't typically like to, like if I can take the wide receivers instead, if I have three running backs, I'll probably do that. Um, just giving me more options. Because usually f- for you, if you're in a PPR league, probably starting three wide receivers, that seems to be moving towards the norm. You got your flex spots and then um, they're, they're, you just want to leave yourself with, with a lot of options at wide receiver, um, especially PPR because they can outscore those lower level running backs pretty easily. Especially like a Rashad White in week one could e- will easily could potentially easily be outscored by a um, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, or, or, or Rondell Moore, who were just going around them. Yeah, so fell right in my lap, my guy. He was literally the first <laughs> video we did we did for the, this upcoming fantasy football season. Were was it was it must draft running backs that we did that I said or yeah 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 so like early and, must draft running backs. Yeah, yeah, so I and one of those guys for me. Was Tyler Algier and must draft meaning like if you if he's an option and round thirteen, you bet you bet your ass I'm going to be taking him <laughs> because I know t- I, and I agree like the Falcons are probably could finish last in the NFL this year. Uh, their O line's not great, you know. There's a lot of unknown with this offense, but it, you know to a certain degree sometimes there's value in that. A lot of people could be undervaluing Tyler Algier and what his usage is going to be in this offense. I think there's actually room for him to be a very efficient running back depending on what they end up doing with Cordero Patterson, he's going to be that gadget guy like McCole Hardman or something like that. Um, obviously, they're going to use him a little bit more. There's still Drake Lennon and Kyle Pitts, but like at, with Marcus Mariota at quarterback, and then maybe it's going to be Desmond Ritter later on in the season. Who knows what happens? I really don't think Kyle Pitts is going to be like... I, I'm, I'm kind of staying away from Kyle Pitts because can, can Kyle Pitts have that consistency week to week to be a guy that you're willing to take in the third round? Where did he go in our draft? Yeah, yeah he, the yeah. third round. Like I don't, I, I really don't think so. Yeah, he's so, got a score, which he didn't do, and I don't think I don't think <laughs> Marcus Mariota gives him a better chance to score than Matt Ryan did. If we're being completely honest, now he's a yeah. freaky talent. I, I think he's an unbelievable yeah. talent. He's oh, one of the too. most talented. I think he's awesome. Yeah, but he just didn't end up in a, in a right position for him. And I, I'm kind of happy happy Atlanta didn't like reach on a quarterback this year. You know, suck this year and take C.J. Stroud or someone yeah. else that's going to be Bryce coming up Young. in the draft this year. Yeah, Bryce Young. So. That, all that being said, I'm going to take Tyler Algier. He was awesome at BYU, especially when Zach Wilson was there. Even when he wasn't, um, he can break tackles, great after contact. So I think um, he I looks think like it, a bowling ball. He yeah, he looks, looks like, like a bowling one. ball. So if there's going to be a guy that's probably going to get the red zone carries, I'm going to say it's going to be him compared to Cordero Patterson, or maybe they're going to share it. Um, regardless, I still think there's great value in taking him there. Um, and then at this point, I mean, there's so many different guys you can look at. The fact that I have Cole Komet makes me kind of want to take a tight end, but I don't think I really want to reach on them. I think there's yeah. probably some guys that you could take uh, that have offer a little bit more value. I have a lot of uh, receivers, but I have four running backs too at this point. I'm not taking. I'm never. I'll never take a second quarterback. To be honest, I, I, that's 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 just me. Yeah, um, I, I would. If if I haven't taken a quarterback yet, I would be 
comfortable going Fields Lawrence yeah. with my last two picks. That would be the scenario where I take two quarterbacks. But otherwise, yeah, completely agree. Because you know, there's always in a 12 man league, at least there's always going to be a quarterback that you can pick up for your quarterbacks yep. by. Like yeah. there always will be, and maybe he's not going to score as many points as your starting quarterback. But they're like all these guys are going to be available pretty much. Yeah, uh, like you and, look at Jameis Winston. I think he's a he's an intriguing play. Um, I think Daniel Jones has the chance to far exceed expectations this year. Don't forget that Daniel Jones can add three, 400 yards on the ground in a full season. He's, yeah. he's done it before. So those are three guys that or four guys that you can either take at the end or will be sitting on your wire and could be potential plays that you scoop up. You know, after if if you don't like what you saw from one of these guys that you took at the end of the draft, a quarterback, then you can scoop up one of these other ones. And I, I, yeah. I definitely uh, I definitely would not for anyone here who's watching is relatively new to fantasy football. It's just not, it's not something you want, want to do. There's all these guys in this area on a week to week basis. Don't have high, you know, potentially matchup could have high ceilings, but um, they can very well just give you very lo a low amount of fantasy points week to week. And yeah. instead you could take a handcuff running back, a wide receiver who is a rookie or who's young, who could emerge potentially there's a path, the quarterback, it's literally you're out there for for 17 games and you either play well or and you're a good player or you don't and it doesn't really change too yeah. much week to week and and there's there's value in taking these receivers that not a lot of people like who aren't watching these videos or doing a ton of research they won't know them until they go off so they're going to be oh this guy oh uh let, I don't know, they don't know Jalen Tolbert yeah they don't know Jalen Tolbert. Tolbert. Tolbert perfect example if he has a great week one like more. Time than not, he's going to be already rostered in so many different fantasy rosters just because of uh, everything that's going on this offseason. But the casual fantasy football fan won't know that, and they'll only know that later on um, when, when, like I said, when this actually, when the the one big week Yeah, that happens, week one. You know? like, Tolbert is a guy who, because of Michael Gallup's injury, he's already been running, uh, or he's already been getting some good work in camp, and the reports are he's the, been getting his work out of the slot, which is perfect for him. Mm -hmm. um, and could be a guy that sees, you know, if he has seven receptions, somebody sees seven receptions, 80 yards, he doesn't even need to score. That's still a, a great fantasy week for you. That's yeah. like 15 points. Yeah, getting so you in the 13th round. And, too, then right? you're, like, and then you got yourself running into spending a bunch of fab on Jalen Tolbert because you took <laughs> you yeah. took Jameis Winston in, with your last pick and he exactly. absolutely flopped in week one. And you don't, you're like, ah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to have him on my, my so, roster anymore. All that being said, I am going to take Jalen Tolbert um, for a lot of the reasons that he said. You know, Michael Gallup won't be playing for the first four to six weeks. Uh, Mari Cooper's gone, so it's really going to be the C.D. Lamb, Dalton Schultz show, and yeah. then Jalen Tolbert too. And we've seen Dak Prescott spread the ball around enough to make a bunch of different receivers uh, fantasy relevant. So yeah. I also really like that Mark Ingram pick, to be honest. I was considering him a running back. We don't know what's going to happen with Alvin Kamara. Yeah. He's prob maybe he's going to start week one, but if he doesn't, uh, Mark Ingram, I think, is that guy. So No, I, that's true. That's definitely true. Okay, so I've gone five wide receivers. I believe I have my five running backs. Let me just, let me just scroll through here. Yeah. So um, I got f five and five. To me, Tyrion Davis-Price is really interesting because I just know that Kyle Shanahan has no affinity to any running back on his team, and he'll do whatever the hell he <laughs> pleases because he's. I think he just has a big ego and wants to prove he can make – like buddy off the street, uh, a top 24 running back in fantasy or just to look good. Um, so he's interesting to me. Gus Edwards, I mentioned, um, I know you like Khalil Herbert. Yeah. Um, what about, what about taking guys like, like I'm seeing there's, you know, there's Gronk is there. We don't know if he's going to play or even like someone like, what would you suggest people taking like Julio Jones? You know, in a round like this. Because he, he'll probably going to sign somewhere. He didn't have a terrible season um, in Tennessee. No, oh, it was terrible. It, it wasn't. It was Awful. terrible. It wasn't I took him in a league, and I, it was terrible. Well, for where you picked him, probably. Yeah. Yes. He, he's. I think he's over the hill. I think it just he just can't stay on the field. Is the thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I. I wouldn't. It really even depends where he it. ends up. But if I you see value in it, I, I have no problem with taking him in the last round either. So I'll say the complete opposite. I think it's good you brought it up. I wouldn't waste my time with, um, you know, maybe like, oh, when does Odell Beckham return? I let I'll let someone else make that mistake. Um, Julio Jones is kind of the same feel for me. Um, I saw Gronk's girlfriend saying that she doesn't think this is his last retirement. So you want to take the shot? You you know you took I don't know somebody even worse than than um, like yeah you took Gerald Everett who didn't even go here. Um, you could pair him with Gronk, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, but I'll go. Um, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna go. T. 
Tyrion Davis Price. Nice. Um, actually, you know what? We haven't talked yeah. much about him. I'm going so that's Tyrion good. Davis Price. We haven't talked a lot about him a lot, but again, any grabbing a, a Niners running back is always interesting. Um, again, so that would be 13 rounds of a fantasy football draft. I think we did a solid job here. If you guys mm. are able to take a look at, uh, I know you might not be able to see all of my squad, but you can see all of Ryan's here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm liking how we how we did here. We definitely. You know, I know you wanted to look at taking a few less running backs, but you still ended up with four. Um, but, but again, attacking yeah. wide receiver early gives you some really high-level guys at I, the top. I think that's what was kind of my goal, to show you that, look, you can take four receivers in the first five rounds, and I'm still very happy with the running backs that I have. Damian Harris and Devin Singletary can be interchangeable, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. the five, the four receivers that I have there that I can pretty much start every single week, um, I'm in love with. So Yeah, and then from my side, I I really like how I... How I started, I mentioned the worry that maybe I should have taken Swift, but it ended up really working out because Etienne and Dylan are guys I really, really like this year. Chase Edmonds is someone at that third running back spot for me that is going to be a volatile guy, but he's still someone that um, with that volatility, I think there's a lot of upside. I secured a really good fantasy QB in Kyler Murray in the sixth, which makes me feel really good. At, that would have been the end of the sixth too. So that yeah. that's fantastic, I think, to me. Um, at wide receiver, I've got a guy that I think has a chance in realm of outcomes. Wide receiver one is certainly not even a, no, nowhere near crazy with Stefan Diggs. No. Um, ev- the profile is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Cortland Sutton with a quarterback that loves to throw the ball deep. And then I added in some guys with some intriguing upside and Elijah Moore and Kadarius Tony with Russell Gage, who I think gives me a good floor. So I like the draft. I think yeah. we both did uh, kind of did what we wanted to do, which is perfect. Uh, but if you, you know, if you guys have been watching along, comment down below what you guys have thought of analysis, what you think of picks, where we should have gone. Um, what you guys would like to see. If you enjoyed the video, video, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for sticking around um, for this entire video. I'll have our written content, which we've been putting out a couple, a couple, at least three or four articles a week out on our blog. So I'll link that down below as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.